Okay, in this video, I'm going to explore some useful quotations if you get a question on Lenny Smortham of Mice and Men. As always, these aren't the only quotations that you could use to answer a question on Lenny, um, but I believe the, the quotations that I've selected enable you to explore different aspects of his character to provide a full answer and to, sh to demonstrate your understanding of the complexity of this character. Um, so straight away, I would always, like I always say about character questions, I always think it's a good idea, obviously once you've written your introduction, to start your first main body paragraph with your initial impression of that character. You can cross-reference that with things, um, with other quotes from different parts of the text, but you can really think about the first time they are described. That helps demonstrate your understanding of the text um, and how a character, and that gives you kind of a better chance of showing character development as well and your understanding of how they develop. So the first description we get of Lenny is that he's a follower. So instantly we view Lenny's character as someone who is incredibly dependent. We later find out that the person that he's most dependent on is George. Um, an example of this is the way George speaks to Lenny about their dream of, have, of owning their own ranch. And his voice, when he recounts this dream, becomes deeper and he repeats his words rhythmically. You might argue that's very similar to how a father might speak to a son if he were to um, read and to memorise a nursery rhyme, for instance. And what is the point of a nursery rhyme? It's there to comfort a child and entertain them. And that's really what George is doing with Lenny. Um, so we start to see this relationship much more like a father and son relationship. That being George being the father and Lenny being the son. So again, we we're, we're really view uh, Lenny as a symbol of innocence um, in this setting. Um, to further support that, when Curly is quite aggressive with Lenny, um, he looks at George helplessly for instruction. Um, so what we learn here is that he's not just innocent, he is really incapable of making any decisions on his own. You might go further in your analysis here and talk about how that might make the reader feel anxious about Lenny's character. Um, if he is always looking towards George um, for instruction, what happens when George isn't around? And one of those times being when Lenny is with Curly's wife and there is no George there to give him instruction. So that encourages the reader to feel incredibly anxious in those moments. And as we know, that doesn't end well because he ends up accidentally killing Curly's wife. And when he does... How does he respond? He says, George ain't going to let me tend no rabbits now. Um, so what does this confirm for, for us? That he is incapable of really understanding right from wrong, like a child may um, struggle with the concept of right from wrong from an early age. So does George. Um, but even though this is about murder, and it seems like he's being quite hurt, heartless here, he's worried about the fact that he won't be able to look after rabbits now. I don't think this makes us feel negative towards Lenny. If anything, I think it encourages the reader to see him as a victim, a victim of, uh, of himself, really, um, because he's, he's just incapable of really understanding the world and how it works and the consequences of his actions or the seriousness of his actions as well. Um, so to link this with context, so put this in yellow, remember you must always kind of link back to context, it really emphasises the vulnerability of those with mental health issues in the 1930s. They had, if they weren't in an institution, we will talk about the alternative later, uh, if he were to be an institution, the type of treatment he would face, but he isn't. And, and there's really no support or understanding for how, how to look after someone like Lenny. He is a huge liability. He is a child um, in his mind who is incapable of looking after himself but worse than that incapable of understanding right from wrong and that does make him a danger which we will move on to next. 
Um, so to focus on the fact that he is a danger, and part of that is because he is so childlike, um, is also his incredible strength. So first of all, Lenny, the name Lenny, means of lion's strength. Um, so he is a symbol of great physical strength. But also look at the way that he is um, he is described throughout the novella. Um, he snorts water like a horse. He covers his face with huge paws. Um, he bleats with terror. He's as strong as a bull. Um, so looking at some of those words in particular, so we've got snorting, horse, paws, bleated, bull. Um, obviously, we, we, there's a lot of animalistic imagery used to describe um, Lenny. And more often than not, other than the bleated, you know, he's he's been described as an animal um, that is incredibly strong. And of course, that means that he is capable of um, of causing great harm to others, which we see. So this is obviously um, foreshadowing. So obviously have that in because you want to show you understand the structure of the novella. Um, so not just looking at this alone, try and link it with your previous paragraph. Let's imagine you'd started with him being quite childish. Linked with his incapability to understand right from wrong. And with that, his incredible strength makes him a greater threat because it means he's incapable of really controlling that strength and knowing when to, um, to hold back. Um, you could have certainly had a, a quotation about him crushing Curly's hand as well to show, to prove just how strong he is. Um, one thing to note, though, however, is even though he's described as a strong um, animal, you might, to kind of critically analyse um, your explanation of Lenny, is focus on the word bleated, which actually references him more or compares him more to a lamb. So even though he as, is as physically strong as, as um, these animals, um, a lamb is a symbol of innocence. Um, so again, we come back to that kind of childlike part of him. And again, we were encouraged in, in that way to see him as a victim of himself rather than a monster. Um, but also lambs are a symbol of sacrifice, and this could foreshadow how he will have to be sacrificed in the end. Um, of course, I'm talking about George killing Lenny. So how can you link this? Um, the fact that he is described in such animalistic way, does this mirror the way that mental health patients were viewed in the 1930s? They weren't viewed or treated like they were human, um, but much more like animals. So some of the examples here would be um, lobotomy or electric shock therapy, lobotomy being the belief that if you cut the front lobe, and I'm definitely not an expert in this, so you can double check this, but they would cut part of the brain thinking it might help, but actually often it, it made, uh, it caused great, serious brain injury. And then electric shock therapy as well, they thought might help mental health patients, but sometimes the shocks were so strong um, that it would actually break their bones. Um, and actually, sometimes it wasn't really used for therapy. It was more used to punish mental health patients. So, so you could say this really mirrors the way he's described in this animalistic way, mirrors the treatment of mental health patients during this time. They were treated like animals. They certainly um, didn't have any human rights respected. Um, okay, so all of these things, the fact that he is childish, the fact that he is a danger um, means that he's also an outsider. So looking at, for instance, his surname being small, obviously you could argue that's an ironic surname because of his size. He's, he's, nothing, he's nothing like small. Um, but is this really a symbol um, for um, the little power he has in society? He's an itinerant worker. They had very little power anyway, especially in the 1930s. We know during the Great Depression, unemployment was high. If you wanted to, to work, you had to travel from ranch to ranch to find it. And you were lucky to get it. And then you really had no rights um, 
protected. So, you know, is it really about him having a, of little power in society as an itinerant worker? Um, and that could be a representative of how many itinerant workers were, not just those like Lenny who had mental illnesses, um, but you could also link it to his mental capability. He is of little um, mental capability. Um, and all for, for that reason, it impedes him from fully participating in ranch life with other workers, hence why he's an outsider. And how do we see that he's an outsider? Even George, who's supposed to be the person that looks after him, um, often is very, very snappy with him. Okay, This is repeated throughout. We often hear, this is the re repetition of referring to him as a crazy bastard. So the kind of derogatory terms that he uses um, to describe Lenny shows how insensitive people were at the time. And is it the harshness of the Great Depression that caused people to be so harsh and brutal to one another? Um, so you could certainly link this to context. And then look at how Curly's wife refers not only to, um, to Lenny, but to crooks. And I obviously won't repeat this word. Uh, refers to cro crooks in a derogatory term. Refers to Lenny as a dum-dum. And then to Candy as a lousy old sheep. And so what we have here in this part, this is when um, Lenny is in crooks' room. We've got all the outsiders together. And ironically, actually, Curly's wife also um, is, is part of that group. She's an outsider as well. We've got the weakest members of society. So that moment in that novella really does um, emphasise kind of the weakest members in society. We've got women, we've got black men, or black people, I should say. Um, we've got those with mental health issues, and we've got the elderly. Those were the weakest. So he is an outsider in that sense. Um, and I think um, one great point to include here, especially because it links really well to the ending and is a good opportunity for you to demonstrate your, your knowledge of structure, is to draw the parallels between um, Lenny's, Lenny and Candy's dog. So this is when Carlson is talking about um, uh, Candy's dog and he says, he ain't no good to you, he ain't no good to himself. And he's referring to the dog, but it makes us start to think about the relationship between George and Lenny and how people might think that about Lenny. Um, and what's important here, which I haven't included, is that George ends up killing Lenny with Carlson's Luger, his, his gun. Um, so we see parallels all the way through. It foreshadows the ending of Lenny. But just like the dog is seen as a burden, so is Lenny seen as a burden. And again, link that to context. Mental health patients were viewed as a burden on society. And that's why he's treated so poorly um, by others, including George, who was supposed to be looking out for him. And then finally, he's definitely a tragic character. One thing that encourages that, that sense of tragedy is the fact that we are encouraged at the beginning and throughout to sympathise for Lenny. Um, there is an innocence to him that makes us not justify what he does, um, but explain the reason why he ends up killing Curly's wife. Um, we understand that it's much more complex than just pointing a finger and calling him a murderer. He is a victim as well of, of the society he lives in. Um, so some things to mention. Um, think about Of Mice and Men, the title, and how it links to Robert Burns' poem To a Mouse. And I'm sure you would have covered this already in your lessons, but the most um, the line in the poem, the best laid plans of mice and men go oft awry or go often askew, depending on the, the version that you've read. So that poem by Robert Burns, which is what the title is taken from, um, for Of Mice and Men, is basically saying the, plan, the best plans are shattered. Okay, It doesn't matter how well you, you plan, things don't always go to plan. Okay, And he's definitely um, showing this in Of Mice and Men. You can plan and plan and plan for your ranch like George and Lenny did, 
and really believe it's going to happen, but in the end it doesn't and their dreams are completely shattered. Um, this is supported with the cyclical structure. It begins and ends um, in the brush by the Salinas River. So because it's cyclical, you might argue that creates a sense of hopelessness. They begin and end where they start. They're not moving forward with their lives. Um, they haven't achieved anything. If anything, they've taken God knows how many steps back. Um, but it also reflects as well kind of the repetitiveness of the lives of itinerant workers, the lack of choice that they really had, um, and calls into question this whole idea of the American dream. Was it really something that was um, possible for any American so long as they worked hard? We've got two men here that are working hard, that are very focused on this dream, and look what happens to them, it all crumbles. Um, so it's really, this is all about exposing kind of the futile efforts of workers such as George and Lenny, itinerant workers, who really believed in the American dream but got nowhere in life, and that cyclical structure really helps reflect that. Um, I've already mentioned Bleated, that's obviously foreshadows the fact that he would be sacrificed, so I won't go on about that again. But in that final um, chapter, we have Lenny back at the Salinas River, and there's um, use of imagery where we have a water snake that is um, eaten by a heron, and then an another water snake comes and it it's bas basically just replaces that water snake that has been um, that has been eaten. Um, so you might argue that that is a subtle reference to kind of the insignificance of man. Okay, that Lenny will be replaced. The the world as a whole doesn't care about him. Um, this is this is a, a tragedy for him, but for the world, no one really cares, and life will go on um, for for everyone. Um, so there's there's a real harshness about it, which is reflected in the nature um, of the setting. Um, and that's everything. So hopefully, um, you don't have to use the same quotes, but hopefully you can explore those aspects of his character. So those being, he's childlike, he's dangerous, he's an outsider, but he's also tragic. And I think it's important to understand this was really to highlight him as a victim of the times and how harsh um, the 1930s were, not only for itinerant workers, but those um, that were vulnerable in society like Lenny with a mental health illness.